There is so many things within this chapter that is done absolutely incredibly. There's so many things that could potentially be hidden within the chapter that changes the whole outcome of everything that just happened. Before I get into some of the nitty gritty details, I thought I'd just go ahead and kind of talk about the whole chapter in general because there's some very phenomenal themes throughout it. Conviction and confliction within this chapter is through the roof. The whole little brother, big brother portrayal is prevalent in so many different characters and this chapter alone swells around so many different perspectives from Reiner to Porco to them talking about Marcel and the kind of manipulation within there with Aaron and Zeke with Gabby and Falco and Colt like everything is well and truly just meeting in the center it's something that I was really impressed with is the confliction and how many characters are so desperate within this chapter so many revolving parts fighting from so many different angles their conviction to take out Eren to take out Zeke is absurd it's it's insane we have the Kite Titan with the massive sniper rifle on the back which is doing a lot of damage to Zeke at the moment everyone is in such a small radius of one another we have the movement uh, of like Armin and Mikasa and everyone else that is trying to aid Eren at this point uh, trying to take out the Kant Titan, which they successfully do towards the end half of the chapter. And everything slowly works up towards that. We get some very personal time between Reiner uh, and Porco, which is actually rather emotional. There's a bit of a flashback within there uh, regarding uh, the bit of manipulation with Marcel and Reiner and Porco and just how everything was convoluted to that point. How there was more to that situation and keeping people safe, which I thought was a really almost end point for Reiner. It's, it's for some reason, every time you feel like Reiner is about to be killed off or obliterated or something along those lines, something gives him this boost of courage and determination to keep pushing forward. And it's it's something about his character that has always been a prevalent thing. It just takes one or two different emotions or uh, situations or understandings to get him up to that point. And I think this was the chapter that really brought him out into the open. His determination was leaking everywhere. It was oozing. He really wanted to get Eren out of his time and obliterate him completely. At the same time, he's also very flip-floppy because of a situation that happens that puts him pretty much at death's door and Porco is kind of the one to save him. This chapter itself is extremely cohesive. Just reading it once, you'd probably overlook a lot of quote-unquote weird details. We're obviously in the midst of Eren struggling at this point versus Reiner and Porco and just trying his best to get to Zeke as quick as he can so he can activate something. Now everyone has been clouded about the idea of the rumbling and Eren's going to activate the rumbling once he gets to Zeke. That's what everyone's concerned about at this point. Us as readers but also Marley in general. They don't want that to happen which is obviously a pretty prevalent thing. It's a massive threat. With the onslaught of Zeke repetitively getting beaten down. We have Reiner who's having this flashback at the moment by connecting somewhat with uh, Porco's memories and obviously everything regarding the past. We had this very weird uh, section of Yelena which was a fraction of the entire chapter, just a, a very small percent of her, but still it's very ominous for her character. We then have Falco and Colt's situation which puts them in front of Zeke and the biggest thing surrounding this situation, because Gabby's also there as well, it sets up some, something very unique. There is a situation right before Zeke actually screams, which is obviously activating all the Titans that have the Titan serum within his body. There's a lot of people throughout the district, throughout the soldiers, including Falco, obviously, which is the reason why they're in front of Zeke. They're trying to change it. And the brotherly conviction and confliction within not only Zeke and his decision to continue screaming after finding out about Cole and Falco was pretty heartbreaking seeing Colt's desire and passion utmost desperation to try and save his brother is saddening but also sacrificing himself in the process when Zeke continues it prior to Falco turning into a Titan however there's a small portion of I guess a Zeke and Aaron interaction where Zeke mentions that he's about to scream but he doesn't. And it's because of Eren, funny enough. Eren actually reaches his hand out to somewhat tell him to stop. His facial expression tells him to stop, but also his hand is reaching out like, don't do it. At least that was the depiction that I got. I could be completely wrong, but when Zeke seemed like he was about to yell and then dropped his head back down like nothing happened, like he wasn't going to do it then, and then Falco and Colt interrupted him, Eren seemed 
seemed like he was trying to stop Zeke from doing it, reaching out his Titan hand like, no, wait, w there's something else here. I wanted to mention that specifically because it does wrap in a couple of different situations that I'm going to talk about in a second. However, from there, Falco turns into a Titan. He goes to attack Reiner. Reiner's having this self-reflection at this point, like he's going to give the, the armored Titan to Falco at this point. And Gabby's shocked at the situation. Colt's dead because he pretty much just sacrificed himself or died with his brother, saying that he's always going to be with Falco, which I thought was very emotional. I thought it was very beautifully done. And just about when Reiner is about to get eaten, get pulled out of his Titan uh, from Falco, Porco rocks out. He's out of his Titan now. He's pretty much demolished at this point, thanks to Aaron and everyone else. And he's heavily injured. He reflects onto Reiner a little bit. He reflects onto Marcel, his older brother, and the situation that he was in, and Falco eats him, which obviously puts Falco as the next jaw titan. This is when Reiner turns around, and that situation I was talking about where he gets the momentum he needs to push forward, and he turns around with all this anger to try and kill Aaron, but Aaron hardens and escapes from his own titan. And as he's running towards Zeke, funny enough, Colt and Gabby are kind of in between them. Colt had a Titan rifle or a sniper rifle on his back. Gabby picks it up, and right before Zeke and Aaron can actually connect with one another, Gabby shoots Aaron and takes off his head completely, ending off the chapter with such a phenomenal panel. Aaron's head completely off his body, in a human form, mind you, and just stopping us right there. Gabby was the person to do this, but there was so much confliction between those moments, so much energy, so much atmosphere. There were so many things going on, so many people fighting for similar reasons, but different different personal reasons, different personal agendas and emotions, everything was just convoluted and meshed together so beautifully within this chapter. With everything that was shown, it's without a doubt there is some hidden stuff most likely in here. And with the general consensus of what I've seen from people talking about, there's some interesting things. First and foremost, Eren's situation in itself. You would think normally that Eren would most likely not be able to outheal this. He would pretty much be dead unless he tried to crystallize or something along those lines, or maybe he's well and truly dead and Zeke manages to t tap his forehead and everything changes from there. I don't realistically know. But it does not look good. The survivability from having your head shot off while in a human form is pretty slim. I'm not really sure of the healing factor for it, but you can imagine it's pretty difficult. However, there could be something else here, and this comes in two different variations or two different ways that this could actually happen. And that is if Eren has already obtained Zeke's blood by either it splattering over him while he got shot or fell from the wall, or the usual canister of blood that Eren actually holds. There has been a lot of situations where Eren carries a canister of blood within his personal reach, basically so he can manipulate combat conversations and situations by cutting his hand open and putting that blood there as well. Obviously, he has to be in contact with the royal blood for anything to be possible. Everyone's been so focused on the, the rumbling that if Aaron and Zeke connect with one another, that the rumbling is going to on slew and everything's going to change. However, there is another ability that a lot of people have forgotten about, which I think could be pretty prevalent within this chapter and change everyone's perspective completely, and that is the mind control. Now, you'll notice that this chapter is pretty much from the perspective of Eldians. Everyone is either in a Titan form or an Eldian at some point. And the most important one out of these people is Gabby, because it's kind of from Zeke and Gabby's perspective that we see Eren getting shot. Somewhere within this chapter, Eren could have started rewriting people's memories and changing and controlling people's memories on the fly. This is something that we realistically have not seen yet, and there's a re kind of a reason for it is because I don't think Eren actually knew how to do it. So you're probably wondering, why do it now? Who would tell him to use this ability. Couldn't have been Zeke, couldn't have been anyone close to him manipulating people's memories that would change the game completely, that would put them at a massive edge, especially on the forefront like this, especially thinking if Eren was dead, but ta-da, next chapter, he's well and truly alive. There is only one character that kind of fits this bill almost perfectly, and that is Yelena. This brings in the idea that Yelena is something much more. A lot of people think that she could be a reincarnation of Yamiya or a reincarnation of the devil, the earth devil. She could be something else more. To an extent, I agree, but at the same time, the logical factor with Yelena is very odd. Sure, she could be a reincarnation of Yamiya or a devil or something like that, but I think what makes her more scary is the fact that she could potentially be none of those. She has this admiration, this desire, this passion towards Zeke of saving him. She could have been the person to tell Aaron 
their secret quote unquote conversation that they had, which we didn't hear, could have involved her telling Aaron about controlling people's minds, controlling Zeke's mind, controlling everyone in their surrounding area's mind. All you need to do is get Zeke's blood. Everyone's expecting you to play the rumbling card at this point. But we do have the ace up our sleeves, which could potentially be the mind controlling. This could have specifically happened within this chapter, and it could have been completely underlaid over the Rhina situation. There's also a lot of things within this chapter that don't really line up properly. I've seen a lot of people pointing at Commander Pixies or whatever his name is. Him having a bottle of alcohol and sitting down when originally he was riding a horse like four pages before it. So whether he got to his destination really quickly, pulled up a bottle of alcohol and started drinking and then turned into a Titan is a little bit odd. The fact that some things seem also a little bit skewered and warped out of reality could also be a possibility. Not to mention the idea that Eren wanted to stop Zeke from screaming, which means that it could have actually activated already, that Eren was controlling people's minds, which means Eren could be also controlling Zeke's mind to a certain extent and thinking that he did activate all the Titans. So everything pretty much after half halfway point of the chapter could entirely be false. It's actually hypothetical at that point. Eren's writing this ordeal situation for everyone against Eren and Zeke at this point. Eren's dead, Zeke's basically on the ground, null and void. It's done, the war's over. But I think there is a lot more here. I think rewriting people's memories would be perfect at this point. Controlling how they think, thanks to either the small canister of blood that Eren has, or Zeke's general blood just splattering after getting shot and falling off the wall and hitting Eren, because they're not relatively that far away. And then on top of that, the Yelena situation, which she could have easily been a person to give Eren that idea of doing it, because there was no mention of doing it beforehand. So it would make a lot of sense. It would play in Yelena's role in being a much bigger situation. Like she is someone much bigger to this story, considering she's just come in and she's influenced so many different people and events. Plus, let's be real, she's rather malicious and scary. Seeing war and destruction, seeing Mali being destroyed is something that brings her joy Joy, but her interaction with people, especially Armin for an example, is something someone orthodox from her or from any normal character. Could be a reincarnation of Ymir, she could be a devil, she could be something else entirely. In some way, shape or form, she could be connected to these people. Or she could just be a psychopath that really believes in Zeke and Eren's ideology and wants to see the world burn, more specifically Marley. Even if Eren is not manipulating people's memories right now, even if this situation is not actually false and everything we've seen within this chapter is actually a ploy. It's not real. It's all hypothetical. Eren's writing this perfect ideal or perfect moment for everyone else that's watching that want to see him dead. Even if this isn't the case, the chapter itself was beautifully done. The amount of hype and anticipation and just the cohesive enjoyment and reading it page by page was outstanding. The thing is, you'll only go back and notice things more prominently, more specifically, if you go back and read it a couple different times. The first read through, you probably won't notice anything and this chapter is just an amazing roller coaster of emotion and events. So many things happen within this chapter. So many things could evidently be happening underneath the entire chapter that could change this outcome completely. And I think what I've seen people have been talking about regarding Eren uh, changing Eldian's memories, regarding the perception of the chapter completely and things being out of place up past a certain point, and also the very ominous panels of Yelena specifically, a lot of stuff could actually be changing right now and building underneath completely. Do I think Eren's specifically dead? Probably not. I think it definitely would be more beneficial for Eren to change people's memories at this point, especially on the fly. I don't know if he would release it in the next chapter or if it's something that it's going to keep us guessing every single month until we actually get to see whether or not that was a thing or not. So this may continue for a good portion and a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, Aaron's well and truly dead at this point. But surprise, six months later, he's actually alive because he was changing people's perception and memories this entire time, which I think would be a pretty massive thing on a lot of people's behalf. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a lot more here. That's for sure. And regardless, I think this chapter was absolutely beautiful just with how everything was so well put together together, the hype, the emotion, the confliction, the conviction to keep fighting and pushing forward, everything was phenomenal. It makes me truly excited to see where this story goes from here towards the end. So with that being said, that is basically it. Let me know what you guys thought of the chapter. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think Eren is changing people's memories using the Founding Titan ability? Do you think Yelena is something a bit more crazier, more important maybe? Who knows? But I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.